If you're doing some MVVM and data binding and you um, need to convert that one value to another, so maybe you have this object that is a string with some weird color identifiers in there and you need to convert that to an actual color, um, or maybe you have some other scenario, that is what we're going to look at in this video. I'm going to show you how to implement value converters in Xamarin Forms and use them in your resource dictionaries um, in Xaml. So be warned, this is also going to contain a little bit about MVVM and data binding and data binding scopes. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you are a little bit familiar with that. If not, uh, there should appear a video on screen and I'll also make sure to uh, link it in the video description um, that uh, will show you a little bit more about this. I'm planning to release more videos on MVVM and data binding and that kind of stuff. If that is something that you need uh, or you have any specific questions around that, please let me know in the comments so I can um, create my videos accordingly. I'm happy to do that. And um, for this one, I'm going to assume you have a little bit of knowledge. So um, here you can see a file new Xamarin Forms application. So whenever you go into your uh, Visual Studio for Mac or Visual Studio 2019 on Windows and you say, hey, give me a new Xamarin Forms application, this is how it's going to look like. Um, I have it running here on the iOS simulator. Uh, we don't need all this stuff that it comes with. I'm going to do the important thing first. So, um, you know, let's name this value converter uh, sample. Here we go. And I save that. And with hot reload, you can see that updates uh, immediately. So that's pretty cool. I don't need all these labels. I'm going to keep one, the title one that's nice and big. So we can show that one. And I'm going to give this a name right here. Uh, so this is going to be, I don't know, the result label. Let's see what we're going to do here. Uh, so this is not entirely um, according to how MVVM should work, uh, but you know it will get the point across for the value converters at least. So uh, the text, I'm going to change that in a little bit, but let's keep it like this for now. And let's just create a new class. So I'm just gonna go to my uh, project, right click, uh, add new class, and let's just call it, uh, I don't know, random, object. So, you know, this can be anything. This can be a person. This can be a product in your web shop. This can be, I don't know, anything, uh, just some random object. And I'm going to give this a, a new property. And a shortcut for that is just typing prop. So here you go. Pro tip right here, prop, press tab, and it will give you all this. And you can just say, okay, I want to make this a string, press tab again, the tab key, and you can uh, switch to the property name. And I'm going to say color, uh, and I'm going to press enter. And there you go. You have saved yourself a couple of keystrokes. So that's a free pro tip that you got in this video. Now for the color, I'm going to do something weird. So this is something that happens a lot maybe into your production app, right? So you get a color in some kind of weird value. So the value will just be a string value, uh, which is going to be something like red or blue or I don't know, Azure or Azure, but who knows how to pronounce that. Uh, so, you know, it, it can be anything. So it's just going to be a random color and you need to convert that into like the actual color. So that's that's going to be a tough case to crack, right? When you're using XAML, you can also do this in um, uh, C Sharp, of course, but I'm going to show you how to do it in XAML because I think that's like where it's mostly useful. Um, so, and let's put in some arbitrary other things like uh, string uh, name, something like that. So uh, here we go, we got two properties. And what I'm going to do now is go into the um, code behind of our main page, which is right here. And I'm going to take that result label, which we just uh, gave a name. And um, I can say uh, binding context on this one. So here it is, the binding context. Uh, again, here comes a little bit of data binding um, knowledge in comes in. Um, so you can bind any type of object to this. Um, and basically what that does is it scopes like what it can um, uh, reach with the data binding. Um, it scopes that with this binding context. That that sounds a little bit abstract, but uh, bear with me. Hopefully it will get a little bit clear. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just say, hey, new random object. Um, and I'm going to assign this with uh, the color of, you know, let's just make it a block color. You know, maybe that's something that happens. So some some type that is not easily convertible. Uh, so we have to figure this out ourselves. Maybe you have some custom colors that are coming from your backend and uh, you need to convert them. And the name is going to be, uh, 
whatever. Uh, no, maybe no, not whatever. I have a good good suggestion. Maybe it's going to be subscribe now. Maybe you have something that you want to subscribe to while watching this. I don't know. Um, so maybe maybe that's a little thing to remember that you need to subscribe. Um, so let's just do that. So now our result label can use data binding on this new random object. So how you would probably typically use this is maybe in your list view or your collection view is what you are supposed to be using these days. Um, and, and you can apply the same thing to that as well. So let's save this and go back to our example. Uh, so what we can do now, our text, we can uh, say, okay, I want to make this a binding um, and we can use the properties. It won't be in the IntelliSense. There is a trick for that. Maybe I should do a video on that, uh, but you can't um, see the actual uh, properties here in the IntelliSense. That's what makes it a little bit of magic for people. But remember that this label is scoped to our uh, random object. So what I can use here is the color or the name and whenever I say binding color it's a string so by default everything will be uh, called the two strings so um, I can just say color and oh I made some code changes so let me stop this and start it again because what I was expecting to see is that the text would be my um, my block color that I've I've um, uh, did here see so here it is but we don't actually want to see the block color we want to see the actual color that it represents uh, which is you know, um, going to be something different. So uh, actually this is not maybe the best example. I'll, I'll show you the other example in a little bit. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to keep the color and I'm going to uh, set the text color to the same thing. So that's going to be something different, right? So uh, the text color like uh, expects a color and not a string, right? So this expects a Xamarin forms color, as you can see right here, instead of a string. So here is where the value converter comes in. So let's just bind this again to the um, sorry to the color here um, and it's not going to know this right I, it might even throw an error or an exception whenever I try to do this um, so this is not going to work because now the text color is going to be blah color and it doesn't know how to work with that so um, let's implement a value converter to do that I'm going to let's just keep the application running I'm going to go to my shared project right click do add new class and I'm going to add this converter which is just a typical class uh, but let's call it a uh, custom color converter let's make it something like that click new and boom here we go so all converters should inherit from the uh, well should implement is what I should say the I value converter um, here we go so this is an interface uh, let's the IntelliSense fix that it's living in uh, Xamarin forms so add using Xamarin forms in here and whenever we do that we need to implement the interface so whenever you do that you will get two uh, methods we don't need the um, constructor so I'm going to remove that and we get two methods which is the convert and the convert back so uh, what happens is whenever we get a request to um, convert uh, we will get the value that needs to be converted and we get the target type where it needs to be converted to uh, you can also specify a parameter we'll see that in a little bit and some culture info so that it might be something culture specific whenever you work with like uh, decimal numbers you need to figure out whether you need to use a point or a comma uh, you can you can deduct that from the culture here and the convert back like the name uh, implies is the other way around so you will get like the the value um, in in the, the converted uh, way and it needs to convert back so in our case this would get a color and you can uh, need to convert that back into uh, a string right so that's basically how this works what you will see typically is that the convert back is not always implemented because that is typically not something that you use whenever you do this in example unless you use a two-way binding um, again not something I'm going to explain but um, look into that if you're interested in it um, so let me just get the point across by implementing this one and we're going to see uh, so we're going to get a string value here so you need to double check because everything is very generic here you need to double check if that is is actually something that uh, we are getting in right so uh, you might want to do something like uh, far um, color value 
is value as um, string. So in, in in the case of strings, it's going to be all right, right? Because uh, you know whenever it's probably null or empty or something, it's still going to be okay. But it can be any object, so um, you know it, it's it's good to check uh, if 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 it's the thing that you're expecting. So uh, whenever this is going to be um, actually, let's say string is null, empty, or white space. Um, the color value, then we're just going to return uh, color dot black, right? So uh, it will just be uh, a black color. We don't know. Maybe you want to throw an exception here. Maybe that's specific to your use case. Uh, but I'm just going to fall back gracefully and I'm just going to say, okay, whenever we don't know, uh, whenever no color is specified, it's going to be black. Um, otherwise, I'm going to check what that color is. And uh, maybe you would want to implement some kind of switch case because you have multiple colors. Um, and we can say switch color value and we can say case, uh, well, what did I make of it? It was blah color, right? Um, right here, and we are going to return, you know, color dot red because red is always good. Uh, and again, the default, so if we have some uh, other value that we do not, um, um, that we not recognize, uh, we are going to say default return again, whoops, return color dot Black, right, so then we always have some kind of back fallback uh, option, and it will return just black. So um, we've implemented this now. If we want to do the convert back, so just uh, make sure that a color comes in, um, and uh, you return a string. So basically, it's just the inverse uh, of this one. I'll I'll leave you to that as a uh, exercise uh, for at home. <laughs> um, and but now the 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 tricky part is how to use this in your example. Um, so I'm going to have to stop this for a little bit and we are going to go into our main page. So if you want to know a little bit how to use resources, I have a video on that as well. It should pop up in your screen right now, um, but uh, and also in the, the video description. Uh, so I'm going to add this converter to the resources of this page. You can also add it on like uh, the app level um, or, or you know, uh, you can you can play with it wherever you need it. And be mindful because, you know, if you add it on the app level, it it will be uh, taking more resources than when you add it to a specific page. So that is something that you want to keep in mind with that. Uh, so I'm going to say content page dot uh, resources. Here we go. And I'm going to add our custom color converter here. So what I'm going to do as a little trick is just copy this name here, paste it in here, and I'm going to let the IntelliSense fix it because we're going to need to add a new XML namespace and it's going to do that automatically for me here. So um, I'm just going to click that and whatever we see happening is here the XML NS, it comes up with a name, we, want, we can change that if we want, and it will uh, provide us with the right namespace uh, where we can find our actual converter. Um, so, you know, that is the way on how to to, um, make a, a, a custom namespace. And you can see it now automatically picks up on our object. Um, and it will tell me that I will have to specify a key because else I can't access it. So we are going to add a X key is, um, I'll just name it color converter here. Doesn't really matter, can be any name, but this is how we can reference it. And our text color is where we want to apply the convert, right? So this uh, binding is color. So this is our color property, again, from our random object here. And we want to transform that into an actual color that the text color property can understand. So what we can do is the uh, we can specify a converter and that converter is a resource. So we can just specify a static resource and you can see the IntelliSense already helps me here. So this points me to this color converter with this the key that I just specified. So let's just do that, um, whoops, and uh, save it. And that's everything I need to do to turn this color into this, uh, through this converter into uh, from string to an actual color so let's just run this and if I quickly put a breakpoint in our convert here you will see that this gets hit here we go and our color value is null because yeah all our value is not uh, casted yet so let's go over this one now it's going to be blah color so that's good um, our target type is a color I don't use that now but you know um, whenever you uh, create a reusable 
um, converter maybe that can have different target types. Uh, you might want to also check like, hey, what do I need to convert it into and take that into your code right here. Uh, we don't have a parameter. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and the culture info is something that we don't need for this. Uh, so here it will do the magic, switch the color and it will return red. So now whenever I run this, you can see our block color turns red. So um, that is pretty cool. Um, okay, so one other thing that I've promised you is to uh, use the actual um, converter parameter. So another thing that you can do here as part of this binding is specify a converter parameter. And this can be like a hard-coded value, like, you know, you can set it to one and it will come in as the string value of one, or you can set it to another binding. So what we can also do is say, say here binding, um, and what, what other thing did we do? is uh, name okay name name um we can do that whoops intellisense is not helping me here name there we go so now whenever we hit that converter again um the value that is in the property name of our um, random object um will come in as well so let's enhance our converter here a little bit and see um in here case is this Okay, we are going to also catch this for parameter um, is parameter as string again. Um, whoops, oh, it's not going to know this because it's the same name, uh, parameter value, here we go, value. And um, so let's just um, see like, okay, let's check if this is not empty as well. Uh, so what we could do, is return color red. Uh, we're going to say here if, oh, we do have to do the inline if, so if uh, return parameter value, well, let's just check if this is not string is null empty or white space. So whenever our um, parameter value is uh, not filled in, then we are going to return red and else we're going to return um, blue. So here we go. So let's just quickly check this again. Um, I'm going to put in a breakpoint. Let's see what's happened. And we should see that our parameter is now filled with uh, something with subscribe because, you know, maybe you haven't subscribed yet. And that's something that we uh, need to do right now. Um, so we are going to step over this. Here we go. Parameter value uh, is null. OK, that's interesting. Uh, oh, so this is a binding. A binding path to name. Okay, so this doesn't work as expected. That's kind of interesting. Um, let's see, go over here. So at least this is going to say the parameter value is null. So I still expect it to be red. There we go. Um, so what is going wrong here? I thought this should work, uh, but this is a binding. Okay, a binding to, um, okay, I thought this worked but it doesn't, so that's interesting. <laughs> uh, so whatever, okay, let's just put this back. I will find out how the binding works and maybe do a little extra video on that, but now you know it doesn't work. Uh, so, but whenever I put just a one in here and we run it again, we will see that the parameter is going to be um, one. And there we go. So now it should turn up as blue because you see one is coming in. Um, and now it's going to be blue. Okay, so there we go. I will find out why the binding doesn't work. Um, you, you know, just to show you that that stuff happens to me as well. Um, and um, we will find out. Let me know if uh, you maybe know the answer in the comments. And um, this is how you implement value converters. Whoops. Looks like I didn't sacrifice enough to the demo gods. Um, so I'm going to sort it out how that works with the converter parameter, which will make for a nice uh, additional video. So let me know if you um, want to see that one as well, uh, where I actually figure out how to use converter parameters. And, um, or maybe you know the solution and I can make a video based on that. Um, that would be cool too. So we can collaborate a little bit. Um, if you like this video, make sure to press that like button, leave a comment uh, with what you want to see, maybe on MVVM and data binding a little bit more because that is some magic stuff right there. Um, if you've liked uh, more of my videos and you want to support my channel, please click that subscribe button and um, I will see you for my next video.